commented in the Gospel according to John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. Jesus appears to his disciples. You can also find this gospel in Matthew 28, 16 to 20, in Mark 16, 14 to 18, and in Luke 24, verses 36 to 49. After Lent, the church is opening the liturgical time of Easter that lasts 50 days and ends the Sunday of uh, Pentecost. That will be in May 23rd. It will be the last day of uh, Easter time that includes eight Sundays. In order to make uh, it easier to understand uh, this gospel, we're going to split it, divide it in three parts. Part one, Jesus appears to, the, to his disciples in John 12, verses 19 to 23. Then we're going to see part two about Jesus and Thomas that we're going to see in John 12, 24 to 29. And finally, part three, the purpose of this book of John, in John 12, 30 to 31. There's going to be split, the gospel, because it covers two different appearances and uh, uh, a statement from John about the purpose of uh, his book. Part one. Jesus appears to his disciples for the first time. It was late that Sunday evening, and the disciples were gathered together behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. Then Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. After saying this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy at seeing the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you give, forgive uh, people's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. As Jesus appearing to his disciples, ten in this case, Thomas wasn't there. Uh, Matthias was not yet elected, so there were ten of them. Part two, Jesus and Thomas, the second time he appears uh, to his disciple. In John 12, 24, 29, one of the twelve disciples, Thomas, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. And Thomas said to them, unless I see the scars of the nails in his hands and put my finger on those scars and my hand on his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were together again indoors and Thomas was with them this time. The door was locked, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Then reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop your doubting and believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. You say to him, do you believe because you see me? How happy are those who believe without seeing me? This is a very important part of this gospel. Jesus and his disciple Thomas. You have a picture here, beautiful picture. Thomas accepting Jesus and stating, my Lord and my God. You have a sculptor. It was the same uh, image. 
between Jesus and Thomas. And you have it in, in glass, stained glass. You see the name Thomas over here. You see Jesus' hand on Thomas pointing the finger toward Jesus' hand. Part three, the declaration of purpose from John about why he wrote this book. This is kind of out of place, but it's important that uh, we know why about uh, the writer of uh, the book, uh, wrote the book. In his disciples' presence, Jesus performed many other miracles which are not written down in this book. So there are lots of miracles that we just don't know about it. But these have been written in order that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through your faith in him, you may have life. Check this, just one single paragraph. Have been written in order that you may believe, the miracles have been written, so you may believe that Jesus is, number one, the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through your faith in him, you may have life. Three statements that are crucial to our faith. In the Gospel of John, according to John, you remember that how it started in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And you know already that uh, that uh, Jesus is the Word of God. And uh, what do some scholars say about the sources and authorship uh, of the Gospels? We know that Mark was probably the first Gospel written, and Mark was, uh, you know, the fount of uh, inspiration for Matthew and for Luke. There is another source. Is the hypothesis of another source that is called the Q source, which means it's the first letter of the German word well, which means fount. So the fount of the Q source for Matthew and for Luke, yeah, but it has never been proven. Uh, the Q source was supposed to be about Jesus' sayings, but there is another document that ever appeared about that. So we're gonna uh, just put it into, into your knowledge uh, that uh, there could have been another source uh, for the, these Gospels. And then you have the last Gospel, according to John. Some scholars believe that uh, John was too old or probably too, dead, uh, too old or dead to, to have written his uh, uh, Gospel. And they attribute the Gospel to the disciples uh, of John, the Johannine school people that were studying under him, but still the Gospel of John. So you know, what does the Catechism say about Jesus appearing to his disciples? The appearances of the risen one, chapter 642, everything that happened during those Paschal days involved each of the apostles and Peter in particular in the building of the new era begin on Easter morning. As witnesses of the risen one, they remain the foundation stones of this church. The faith of the first community of believers is based on the witness of concrete men known to the Christians and for most part still living among them. Peter and the twelve are the primary witnesses to his resurrection, but they are not the only ones. Paul speaks clearly of more than 500 persons to whom Jesus appeared on a single occasion and also of James and all of the apostles. You can check this in 1 Corinthians 15, 4 to 8 and Acts 1, verse 22. Paragraph 644, even when faced with the reality of the risen Jesus, the disciples are still doubtful. So impossible did the thing seem 
they thought they were seeing a ghost. In their joy, they were still disbelieving and still wondering. Thomas will also experience the test of doubt. And St. Matthew relates that during the recent Lord's last appearance in Galilee, some doubted. Therefore, the hypothesis, hypothesis that the resurrection was produced by the apostles' faith or credulity will not hold up. On the contrary, their faith in the resurrection was born under the action of divine grace from the direct experience of the reality of the risen Jesus. In Acts 1, verses 1 to 5, we read from Luke, Dear Theophilus, in my first book, I, Luke, of course, wrote about uh, all the things that Jesus did and thought from the time he began his work until the day he was taken up to heaven before he was taken up. He gave uh, instructions by the power of the Holy Spirit to the men he had chosen as his apostles. For 40 days after his death, he appeared to them many times in ways that proved beyond doubt that he was alive. They saw him and he talked with them about the kingdom of God. And when they came together, he gave them this order, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift I told you about, the gift my father promised me. John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Construction the gospel. When the disciples were gathered together behind the locked door, afraid of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. He showed them his hands and his side, and they were filled with joy at seeing the Lord. And Jesus said to them, Peace be with you, as the Father sent me, so I sent you. Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit, and told them, if you forgive people's sin, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. And in John 12, 24, 29, one of the twelve disciples, Thomas, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So they told him, we have seen the Lord. Thomas said to them, unless I see the scars of the nails in his hands and put my finger on those scars and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were together again indoors, and Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here and look at my hand. Then they shout to your hand and put it in my side. Stop your doubting and believe. Thomas answered, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, do you believe because you see me? How happy are those who believe without seeing me? And in John 12, 30 and 31, in his disciples' presence, Jesus performed many other miracles which are not written down in this book. Then John wrote his purpose about why he wrote this book. He said, but this has been, born, been written this has been written in order that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through your faith in him, you may have life. And the central characters, facts and items and activities presented in this gospel, Jesus appeared to his disciples when they were afraid, and in hiding, and told them, peace be with you, as the Father sent me, so I send you. Jesus breathed on them the Holy Spirit and gave them the power to forgive sins. Thomas was not with them when Jesus came, so they told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas answered, Unless I see the scars with the nails in his hands and put the finger on those scars and my hands in his side, I will not believe. A week later, when, Jesus, when Thomas was with them, Jesus appeared again and said, Peace with you. And Thomas told Thomas, Put your fingers here. And look at my hands. Then reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting 
and believe. The man said to him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, do you believe because you see me? How happy are those who believe without seeing me. Then John wrote his purpose about why he wrote this book. And to declare that in the presence of Jesus performed many miracles which are not written down in this book. John wrote, but these have been written in order that uh, you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and through your faith in him, you may have life. In this gospel, we can identify at least five important teachings after the resurrection of the Lord. Teaching number one. The ten disciples who were gathered together behind locked doors afraid of the Jewish authority. Okay, they were in shock and afraid. Their leader had been crucified. Before Jesus sent the afraid peace pipe of disciples to deliver the good news, he gave them his peace, breathed on them the Holy Spirit, and gave them the power to forgive sins. There you have a picture of Jesus with the ten disciples present at the first appearance of the Lord. What's a big deal about Jesus' peace? Look at it. Remember, we're looking at the Lord's plan for his people. The prophet Isaiah wrote in Isaiah 48, 22, there is no peace, say the Lord, for the wicked. Or in another translation, you can read it as, as this. There is no safety for sinners, says the Lord. It's the same thing. In Jesus, there is peace or safety. In Jesus, for the ones who believe and follow him, who made us righteous with his redemption for our sins. That's a big deal. That's the deal here, redemption. So what's the big deal about Jesus giving the Holy Spirit to his disciples? Well, the Lord is revealing the existence of the Holy Trinity. And he said that to his disciples, so they would understand, finally. They would have never been able to understand without Jesus giving the Holy Spirit. It was just too, too big of a statement uh, from Jesus. And of course, giving the Holy Spirit to the apostles, in, in a way, opened for us the possibility of receiving the Holy Spirit through the baptism. Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I'm doing, but later, later, you will understand. Read this in John chapter 13, verse 7. So they didn't understand anything. Only after they received the, the Holy Spirit, they could have done a complete understanding of what Jesus was doing. And what is the big deal about Jesus giving that to them the power to forgive sins? Well... Jesus established the sacrament of reconciliation for his church. That's the big deal. This is number two. Thomas was not there, so he didn't believe him when they told him we have seen the Lord. Nah, I don't believe. I need to see him. Then Jesus appeared again and told Thomas, put your finger here and look at my hands. Then reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop your doubting. Believe. Now 
Thomas was a loyal disciple of the Lord, not an unbeliever. He just had some, shall we call it, the reasonable doubts. You probably have had two. I probably have had those doubts too. And uh, after his doubts were dispelled, answered by the Lord, he was inspired by the Holy Spirit to give the most important statement of faith that he could have said. That. He recognized the Lord. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. That's a big statement of faith. My Lord and my God. It's kind of difficult to understand, but uh, you know, I'm going to give you a, a couple of uh, cartoons so you can explain it to some of your kids or grandkids in an easier way. You see, friends of Jesus, like he, Thomas, he was given the gift of declaration. He declared that Jesus was his Lord and his God. Jesus chose Thomas to be a, one of his special 12 friends. Thomas didn't always understand what was happening, but he knew Jesus was the person to follow. And he did. After Jesus died, some of the other followers told him Jesus had come uh, back to life, but Thomas wasn't sure. He had to see Jesus for himself. And he did. He finally realized that Jesus was God incarnated. And uh, you may use this famous Thomas the Train that your kids, your grandkids will re instantly recognize. And then you have a, a cartoon of Jesus also and the apostles and doubting Thomas. They will relate to this uh, uh, Thomas the Train cartoon. To, it will be easier for you to explain it to your grandkids, the kids. And of course, the last cartoon, my Lord and my God, and uh, a hand perforated by one of the nails who, yeah, with which uh, he was uh, nailed into the cross. Not maybe kind of traumatizing for the kids. Use your judgment to do that. Teacher number four. Then the Lord declared something of the utmost importance to us. Check this. He told Thomas, do you believe because you see me? That was a question for him. Okay. But what's in here for us? Jesus told Thomas, how happy are those who believe without seeing me? Okay, we were not there. We didn't see that. We didn't witness that. But we as Christians, we believe this. So Jesus, this is a, a, a promise. How happy are those who believe without seeing me? We haven't seen the Lord. We were not there. That was what happened 2,000 years ago. But we do believe. So Jesus is promising that uh, we will be happy because we believe without seeing him. This is number five. John considered crucial to share about the way he decided to write this his book. In the disciples' presence, Jesus performed many other miracles, not the ones that are in, in the Synoptic Gospel only or the ones that are in John. But he said that the, those many other miracles are not even written down in, in this book. But this have been written in order that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, Jesus is the Son of God, and uh, that through your faith in him, you may have life. Three affirmations, three sentences, everything encompassed in those three sentences. <clears throat> so many concepts uh, that you may find useful to remember. This is appeared to the afraid said, disciples and told them, peace with you as, you, as the Father sent me. So I sent you.
It's following the same pattern. My father sent me, I, I'm sending you. <laughs> Jesus showed them his hands and his side, breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And so he gave them the Holy Spirit so they would understand. Jesus also empowered them, if you forgive people's sin, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, you're not forgiven. Thomas was not there when Jesus appeared. So he told them, unless I see these scars of the nails in his hands and put my finger in those scars and my hands in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were together again indoors and Thomas was with them this time. The doors were locked, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. I said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Then reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop your down and believe. <coughs> I'm sorry. We need to put a little bit of attention that uh, they were together again and the doors were locked. So Jesus appeared to them, just appeared to them in the middle of them. Yeah, but uh, every, everything was locked, the windows, the doors. That is also telling us that Jesus is uh, now constrained by time or by space. He can appear whenever he wants, whatever he wants to. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God, finally. And Jesus told him, do you believe because you see me? And Jesus is telling us how happy are those who believe without seeing me. That's for us, that's his message for us. In his disciples' presence, Jesus performed many other miracles which are not written down in this book. So there, other things happen. But John wrote that the purpose of about the why he wrote the book. He said, but this, you see, he was talking about the miracles have been written in order that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through your faith in him, you may have, may have life. So let's do some uh, review questions. Why the disciples were gathered together behind locked doors? What did Jesus tell the disciples before sending them to preach the good news? What are the four things that Jesus gave to his disciples? Why Thomas was doubtful? What did Jesus did to answer Thomas' doubts? Why Thomas' answer is so important? And why is Jesus' remark to Thomas so crucial to us? You have enough information to answer this question by yourself. If you don't remember something about one of the questions or more, you can always go back and check it in the uh, in the workshop. And uh, this has been the workshop for this Sunday about the gospel for this Sunday. This is Alejandro Burgos from El Paso, Texas. And uh, as usual, when required, the references will be taken from the Good News Translation Bible. Catholic Bible and the Catechism of the Catholic Church. And if you can, please subscribe to this channel. And I'll see you next Sunday.